Hello and welcome to this video for Module 6 of the Netbox Zero to Hero training course. If you haven't already checked out the earlier modules yet, then you can find the link to them in the notes below to get started. For this demo, I'm using a Docker instance of Netbox running locally on my laptop. If you'd like to follow along with the demo, then you can easily do that too. There are a couple of links down below to help you spin up your own instance of Netbox, along with a link to the notes that accompany this video module. In this video, our network engineer, Susan, will populate Netbox with the wireless LAN data for the planned new Brisbane branch office. To do this, Susan is going to use some simple Python scripts. Again, you'll find links to all of these resources in the accompanying Git repository. Okay, so we're logged into Netbox with Susan, and as you can see, there is no data yet in the wireless section of the homepage. Susan has already followed the setup instructions for Python and has activated a new virtual environment. Please do check the instructions in the course notes if you need help with this initial setup of Python. So in VS Code, let's explore the Python scripts. The first task is to create the new wireless LAN group. And the script for this is called create underscore WLAN underscore group dot PY. So starting at the top, we're importing the requests module, which is used to make API calls. Next is the JSON module that is used to work with the data in JSON format. And then the OS and the .env modules allow the script to access the local system environment. Line 7 loads the .env file so that the API token can be read by the script. Line 12 creates a variable called token and sets the value from API underscore token, which has already been added to the .env file. Lines 15 to 17 set some variables for the netbox system that you are connecting to, and you can adjust these to match your own system. Line 20 takes these variables and uses their values to build the URL for the API request. And as this script is going to create a new wireless LAN group, then the API endpoint is wireless forward slash wireless LAN groups. Lines 23 to 26 define the payload that is going to be sent in the API request. In this case, there is a name, a slug, and a description for the new group that represents the wireless networks in the Asia Pacific region. Lines 28 through 31 define the headers being used, which should be familiar to you now if you've watched earlier videos in this course. You can see on line 30, the variable for the API token is being used without the token itself needing to appear in the code. Then finally, lines 34 through 36 make the API call using the Python requests module. There is a new variable called response, which has a value of the API request made using the requests module. This consists of the request type, which is a post, the URL, the headers, and the data payload. Lines 35 and 36 take the response, which is what has been returned back from the Netbox server, and prints it using some indentation to make it more human readable. Okay, so to run this, go to the terminal and from the virtual environment, enter Python 3 followed by the name of the script, which is create underscore WLAN underscore group dot PY, and hit enter and the script has run in less than a second and has printed the response in nicely formatted JSON. There is now a wireless LAN group called Asia Pacific WLANs and it has an ID of two. To view this in the Netbox web interface, just flip back and click on wireless and then wireless LAN groups. And there is our new group. Perfect, okay, so the next task is to add the actual wireless LANs themselves. The script to do this is called, you guessed it, create underscore WLANs.py and it is identical to the first script apart from two things. In line 20, the API endpoint is now wireless forward slash wireless lands, and the payload is a list containing the details of both of the new SSIDs. Now you will have noticed also that the payload contains ID values for the group, the VLAN and the tenant. Now in our demo, you could easily find these values from the web interface, but you could also use Python scripts to get these values. So to get the ID of the wireless LAN group, there is another script called get WLAN groups, which uses a get request that you can see on line 30 to the wireless LANs groups API endpoint using the brief format. So running that returns the group and you can see the ID of two. To get the IDs of the VLANs, just run the get VLANs.py script, which returns the list of VLANs. And this shows VLAN IDs of three for the branch Wi-Fi VLAN and four for the guest Wi-Fi VLAN. 
and then run the get underscore tenants.py script to return the list of tenants. And there is the ID of five for the consulting tenant. So now we have the values for the IDs needed to create the wireless LANs, all that remains is to run the script to add them. So run the command python3 create underscore wlands.py. And there you go, you can see the nicely formatted JSON output of the response from the Netbox server. To view the result of this in the Netbox web interface, just flip back and then click on wireless LANs, and there they are. Both SSIDs are members of the Asia Pacific WLANs group, and click on the branch office Wi-Fi for example, and you can see all of the details of the SSID, including the group, the VLAN and the tenant, along with the authentication settings, which is awesome. So I hope that's been a useful overview of how to add wireless LAN data using some really simple Python scripts to interact with the Netbox REST API. Without diving too deep into Python, I hope that you can see how easy it is to get started with some basic scripts to save you time and reduce errors when adding data into Netbox. Interacting programmatically with the Netbox REST API using Python also opens up so many possibilities for using Netbox as your single source of truth for your network automation efforts going forward. If you fancy a challenge, why not develop these simple scripts further and improve them? Maybe you could create a Python function to add the data or move the JSON data into a separate file and get your script to loop over it when it runs. It would be great to see how you develop your scripts and if you want to share this or just ask some questions, then pop over to the Netbox Zero to Hero channel on the DevNet Slack community and join in the discussion. So I hope you enjoyed that and once again, thanks for watching.